This is VOA News. I'm Diane Roberts. Both sides suffer heavy casualties as Ukraine strikes back against Russia. This according to a U.K. assessment. AP correspondent Karen Chamas has more. British intelligence officials monitoring the combat say the most intense fighting has centered on the southeastern Zaporizhia province around Bakhmut and further west in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk province. They say Russian losses are probably at their highest level since March. A Russian military spokesman says his forces are prevailing. The Ukrainian military says this weekend Russia's carrying out 43 airstrikes, four missile strikes, and 51 attacks from multiple rocket launchers. Military officials warn Ukraine's counter-offensive will likely last a long time. I'm Jackie Quinn. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has kicked off two days of high-stakes diplomatic talks in Beijing, aimed at trying to cool exploding U.S.-China tensions that have set many around the world on edge. Lincoln was meeting Sunday with Chinese Foreign Minister Ching Gong for an extended discussion to be followed by a working dinner. Despite his presence in the Chinese capital, the prospects for any significant breakthrough on the most vexing issues facing the planet's two largest economies are slim. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated on Sunday that Israel will do whatever is necessary to protect itself against Iran's aggression. Speaking at an Israeli cabinet meeting in Jerusalem, Netanyahu said that he's made it clear to his American friends time and again that he opposes the agreement. This is VOA News. Residents of Sudan's capital, Khartoum, report airstrikes, killed civilians, and pummeled multiple parts of the, of the city Saturday, as warring military factions agree to yet another ceasefire in a series that have so far failed to stop the violence. BOA's Jeff Custer with more. Fighting between the Sudanese Army and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, or RSF, is entering its third month, with neither side gaining a clear advantage. The war has displaced 2.2 million Sudanese, and the UN reports has sent the nation's warrior Darfur region into a humanitarian calamity. Sudan's health minister reports it has killed more than 3,000 people and injured more than 6,000. Late Saturday, the United States and Saudi Arabia said the two factions had agreed to a new 72-hour ceasefire that would begin early Sunday. Previous truces have not managed to bring the fight into a complete halt. The army has the advantage of air power in Khartoum and its neighboring cities, Amdram and Bari, while the RSF has embedded itself in residential neighborhoods. Jeff Custer, VOA News, Washington. North Korea has opened a key political conference to tackle its struggling economy and review defense strategies in the face of growing tensions with rivals. AP correspondent Karen Chamas has more. The meeting of the ruling Workers' Party's Central Committee came as the United States sent a nuclear-powered submarine to South Korea. The move was the latest show of force against the North, which has ramped up its nuclear weapons testing in recent months. The meeting has focused on the country's economic campaigns for the first half of 2023, as well as foreign policy and defense strategies. I'm Karen Chemas. Tens of thousands of protesters formed a ring around Serbia's government headquarters in downtown Belgrade on Friday, demanding the resignation of the country's populist president. Top security officials and the liberation of pro-state TV stations that they say promote violence, all in the wake of two mass shootings that stunned the nation. The protesters carried posters of Serbia's populist president and prime minister in black and white striped prison uniforms. They chanted slogans and protests. Leaders said their demands must be fulfilled by the end of next week or the peaceful protests will assume a new form. Authorities continue to search for victims and survivors of a trawler that sank off the coast of Greece with as many as 750 migrants on board. Meanwhile, conservative leader Kyriakos Mitsotakis blasted critics of the rescue operation. Naysayers, Mitsotakis said, at a campaign stop in the town of Sparta, should turn their ire against traffickers he called human scum. To date, 104 survivors have been rescued and 78 bodies have been recovered. From Washington, I'm Diane Roberts, VOA News.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.